Ah, nothing like a nice peaceful morning before the sun comes up, am I right? Well, just finished the uh, Battle of Summer uh, with, uh, let, let's take a look here, <laughs> with uh, seven minutes to spare. That's funny. <laughs> we just got it done, literally with seven minutes to spare. That is cute. Yep, getting her in right at the buzzer, huh? <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, guys. Uh, but while I'm waiting for this uh, little timer, the seven minutes, we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite strategies. And you can see I'm only level 16, uh, but with that in mind, I'd like to point out that uh, I've only been playing, or re I've only recently started playing Enlisted again. I played uh, in the closed beta for Moscow <laughs> a long time ago uh, but now in 2021 during this event uh, Moscow is more polished than it ever has been it I believe personally and this is my opinion that uh, Battle of Moscow is the the best campaign but you know everybody has their opinion but let, let's talk about why and let's talk about my loadouts here uh, my loadouts currently are set up for uh, grinding, right? Grinding experience. That's why, yes, I have my premiums up. <laughs> Trust me, uh, guys, the premium engineer squad uh, for Moscow, especially for the Allies. The German one's pretty good, too. I mean, I just don't personally care too much for the iron sights on the uh, German, uh, the Mosin. Uh, the, what was it? it was a Finnish rifle, right? I'll look at it later. We'll do we'll do another video on that weapon. But this little thing, excuse me, this little thing right here is the uh, Arisaka, and I, I imagine I'm probably mispronouncing that, but that's okay. Looking at the stat cards, you know, most people kind of dismiss this as a, a weak weapon, uh, but in Moscow, where most of your engagements will be. 100 meters or less with this fire rate with this fire rate you will be pretty pretty damn competitive let's check the uh let's check real quick just real quick i know i have a quad set up with at least one of these damn things maybe not oh there it is yeah so it's a 10 percent on top of on top of this uh the gewehr 3340 would put it pretty much in line with the Arasaka. Yeah, six, let's see, 66. Let me just switch, swap right on back over. Actually, yeah, it, yeah, it, it should be almost identical. I mean, I have an upgraded one, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, the Arisaka is uh, basically basically mostly uh, kind of like a fully upgraded uh, axis starting bolt action and you may you may you know and it has pretty decent iron sights I like I like them you know they're not for everybody there you can see them right here a little bit closer little just a little bit <laughs> just a little thick I mean I like I like my sights just a little bit thick but that's okay <laughs> All right, let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. Um, so I pull out my premium engineer squad because engineers uh, now get, I mean, they have for a little while, but uh, the, the experience bonuses that you get as an engineer actually pop up. Like, I don't know if y'all noticed, uh, but there are score pop-ups, which I, I don't know who suggested that to the developers, but ever since those score pop-ups came up, I've been having a lot more <laughs> fun with the game. And you might think, oh, you, you know, you might think whatever you want about that, but that's okay. You know, everybody has their own personal preferences. I personally, you know, if I huck a grenade and do a little damage with it, get a few assists, you know, I like to, you know, you know, you get 300 points, maybe you get 400, you feel better about that one. It's just, it's fun, right? It's it's engaging. And if you don't like the pop-ups, we always have <laughs> Lone Fighters. And I do enjoy Lone Fighters immensely. But that Lone Fighters, uh, ironically enough, is best enjoyed with friends. Trust me. 
if you want to have a good time in Lone Fighters, uh, just get get three friends together. See these little see these ab players. It's almost like I could do it right now, but <laughs> it's almost like I could do it right now. But that's okay. Um, I've, you know, right now we're just gonna focus on solo gameplay because I know that not everyone uh, either enjoys playing with friends or unfortunately doesn't have any anyone added i mean it's super easy to add people guys I'm, i don't want to boom and just <laughs> go through that real quick <laughs> but pretty much anyone you play with um you can just add them right here on contacts and if they accept it and you both become friends and you have people to play with trust me i've met so many cool people uh just in this game and uh especially on uh, Discord. But yeah, so we take out. <laughs> there I am getting sidetracked again. Take out our beautiful little uh, carbine rifle here, the Arisaka, uh, with a Russian TT pistol. I, I do enjoy this thing. And every one of our engineers here has a large backpack, um, as they do. They have the perks that they do. I plan on uh, re-rolling these <laughs> at some point. I'll figure out exactly what I want to do with them, but that's okay. But on our second slot, there's a reason. First slot, premium engineer, because uh, if you rush out as an engineer, especially a premium one, and build a bunch of stuff, um, at first, thi first thing in the game, like your rally points will be spawned on. Your rally points will be spawned on if you place them correctly. If you build sandbags on uh, the objective, and hopefully soon just anywhere, if, if somebody fights near one of your sandbags and it protects them, you know, maybe get experience for that. That's that, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, and ammunition resupplies. You want to uh, load up your engineer, or at least I do. <laughs> to uh, put those three ammo crates down so that by the time my engineers are killed, as invariably they will be killed because I'm not <laughs> the best player in the game, uh, we pull out our premium submachine gun squad. And now I know a lot of y'all say, what What are you gonna do with this little premium squad? You know, they have a, you know, a lot of people tell me they really don't like this rifle here because I mean, look at this. <laughs> It does have an absurd fire rate, and it does good damage because it is a fully upgraded weapon. Uh, but, oh geez, where is it? A 21 round magazine. You you can just about pull the trigger on this thing and just immediately uh, empty the magazine. But there's a little teeny secret to this weapon. There's a little secret. So if we take a look at the stats, we can see that it does uh, 6.4 damage because it's fully upgraded. Well, yeah, uh, most of the submachine guns will do that. Yeah. But since this is fully upgraded, we can take a look at the range at 100 meters. We'll be doing 3.2 damage. So we can assume pretty safely that uh, if we're... It, most engagement ranges are well under 100 meters, like we were talking about with Arisaka. So if you're engaging somebody at say 70 meters, uh, you're going to be within a three hit kill, the three hit kill range. And the recoil of this thing, you're not going to want to, you know, you're not want to just want to go ham with it. Uh, oh, look at this. It's almost like a hidden feature right here. <laughs> that's a semi-automatic. Yeah, that's a semi-auto right there. So if you treat this thing uh, like a semi-automatic weapon, most of the time and then you just save the fun mode uh, because you don't have very many rounds 20 rounds in a lot but it, it is extremely effective with this fire rate and it does have a, ver a fairly quick reload uh, an acceptably quick reload but that's semi-auto that's semi-auto where the sauce at trust me oh my goodness <laughs> oh look and uh, uh enlisted was just super excited to let let me know what the new event was and thank you very much because once uh, once we complete uh, these two, here let's scroll down real quick. Once we complete uh, these next two tasks in stage two, 
we will have access to the Focke Wolf uh, 189. This 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 little kitten right here. And this aircraft is very much like uh, that submachine gun that we just showed you. You know, a lot of people are going to look at it. Now it only has two 7.92 millimeter machine guns, only two of them, and uh, four 50 kilogram bomb drops. And you might you might think to yourself, you might think to yourself, well, the BF-109 has uh, two of these bomb drops and it has a cannon, so why would I use this over the 109 for a slot? I mean, obviously this is uh, probably an attacker aircraft. We won't know until we get our hands on it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a reconnaissance aircraft, and it was very, very, very agile. Uh, we will be able to demonstrate that soon. But yeah, um, why would you use this over the Stuka? Why would you use this over the Stuka? The Stuka, for some reason, <laughs> I think I heard a little a little birdie told me that for some reason uh, the. The uh, Stuka still has a 250 kilogram bomb in Moscow, and you know what? As as a, a person who enjoys ground pounding, I can't can't we make that like a hundo or something? Like 250 is too much for the amount of armor that tanks have in Moscow. You might disagree with me and say, "Oh, the Stuka has sirens; it kind of balances it out." Well, 250 kilogram bomb. <laughs> At least in, in Moscow, right? In Berlin, I could see a case for like a singular 250 bomb drop like maybe maybe but in moscow when you have uh like bt7s don't have a lot of armor t26s don't have a lot well i mean pretty much everything doesn't have a lot of armor <laughs> once the uh i'm assuming uh, the t34 is coming out soon ish but once the t34 is out on the field I mean, the 250 make a little more sense, right? Because the T-34 has uh, very strong armor. <laughs> Looking forward to that at some point. Wink, wink. T-34 in Moscow is going to be a game changer. It's going to attract so many people to this, uh, to this little game. Oh, getting sidetracked. So, yeah, 50 kilograms uh, in this platform... You see how much visibility you have here, especially, uh, excuse the, the, the way I'm going to say this, but as a pilot, you're going to be looking between your legs. See, see all that visibility right here? You're going to be able to line up those 50 kilograms uh, as if you were aiming through the scope of a sniper or something. If that's what it feels like, right? There's a reason why uh, the Germans did a lot of this uh, full glass canopy sort of uh, designs in a lot of their uh well, this is a recon aircraft but you know later on like the ju 188 uh, in uh, normandy i enjoy flying that little kitten immensely oh my goodness yes but why not because <laughs> not because it has those silly bombs uh, because it is very maneuverable for what it is and it's fun to fly because it has that gorgeous open canopy okay oh let's look at the the task that we have to do to unlock this beautiful machine today finish the battle with top 50 percent of your team well you know what that's just uh that's an above average game so i'm a below average player so <laughs> this shouldn't take me this shouldn't take me too long because you know we all have games and again this is why i'm pulling out my engineer because if you if you start with your engineer and you just build rally points and ammo boxes and sandbags that's all the base stuff that you start out with you don't even have to have a premium for that but you build those things smartly you're pretty much going to guarantee yourself uh, top 50 percent if you're competent in how in your placement and uh, just getting a few kills you know that's why we have the submachine. We have the engineer to place down the base for your experience or your score. And then we have the submachine gun uh, squad to come in and clean up a little bit to get to get the kills that also bump up your score. The kills do matter quite a bit in this game. For I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a war game. But uh, in my personal opinion, just giving yourself that foundation of score 
And you're helping your team out, right? You're helping your team out by every time you place a rally point when no one else is, guess who is the only, if you're the only show in town, I mean, yeah, yes, it kind of sucks that your team isn't building rally points, but if you big brain it and you're the only one building rally points and you build good ones, uh, that will help your team immensely, possibly secure you a win just that alone because you are the only one building them. And if you place ammo crates, sandbags uh, on attack, not recommended, but building ammunition crates just kind of in the path on, on the way to the next objective, just randomly spread out. People will be like, oh yeah, I need ammo. And uh, you learn how to do that by just walking from a captured object objective on attack and following your team and seeing where the, the herd is going and then just place like an ammo crate along that path because most people will take that path. But if you place a rally point or your teammate places a rally point, that that it that makes sense you then want to this is why you have three of them right this is why you have three ammunition crates you spawn on either your rally point or their rally point now don't put the ammo crate right next to your rally point because nobody needs ammo at that point you want to push towards the objective and again check your map see where your team's funneling see where your team is gathering and then just go build ammunition, sandbags, you know, on your team. And they will invariably pick up ammunition, giving you score. They will fight behind the sandbags. And, I, okay, I'm not 100% on whether sandbags give you experience off of a point. I, but, you know, I've been, I've been so busy with work, I haven't hardly been paying attention too much to a lot of the news. And I apologize for that. But, you know, we all have lives, right? Yes, we do. But yeah, just doing that until your engineers are burned. That's why we have a third or a second engineer on the third slot. Oh my goodness here. I see, I apologize for uh, being so glitchy, guys, but I just have to get another light, right? I have to get another light to kind of balance this one out. It'll It'll get better, it'll get better. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> Top 50%, uh, trust me, four times, that's not that's not going to take you very long. Just, like I said, build engineering crap for your team. <laughs> and you, that will already give you a leg up on people who don't build. As far as the melee weapon uh, kills go, 30. 30 is actually, I was expecting like 70, like the bolt action. <laughs> Or I don't remember how much the flamethrower one was in D-Day, but 30 is not bad. Uh, but take note here, it requires completion of the previous task. So uh, very important detail. You have to complete, f finish the battle in top 50% of your team. Yeah, and this doesn't specify a campaign. So we're going to do this in Moscow today. And I'm excited about that because <laughs> nothing, nothing against uh, Berlin in particular as a campaign, but it, it just happens to be the the new thing right now. And y'all know when it, <laughs> whenever new content comes out, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's super fun, but you know you also have to kind of step back. Let's get out of this. You kind of have to step back and. You know, this, there's a reason I go back to Moscow, right? It's my favorite campaign. I do like Normandy. Um, and I think Normandy plays a lot better now that um, <laughs> a bunch of people are playing Berlin. Of course they are, because it's the new campaign. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am just that uh, it's just in open beta. Yeah, it's going to have some teething issues. Yes, it's going to be a little rough. Yeah, you know, all this stuff. But... Uh, the more players that are in Berlin testing it, right? We, and I, I use finger quotes because the players aren't aware that they're... <laughs> Most of them don't seem to be aware that the purpose of playing a beta is to help the developers just make it better. And there are so many people complaining. And I'm not going to complain about the people complaining because that would be double <laughs> complaining. That's stupid. But, you know, whatever. 
let's just let's continue back with what what we were doing before uh, uh, the game let us know. Hey, guy, you should probably work on your objectives. The top 50% one is going to be super. Uh, that'll be almost relaxing. That is a nice change of pace over getting the wins yesterday. Uh, as as y'all know, I played uh, almost exclusively for the Axis uh, y yesterday, the day before, in the Berlin campaign, just because I wanted to record uh, some wins as Axis. You know, just because I thought it would be. You know, because everybody jokes about Axis never wins in Berlin, and it is an asymmetric campaign, which I 100% I love asymmetric warfare in in video games. <laughs> Excuse me, let me clarify. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah. So <laughs> moving on, the submachine gun guys. Oh yeah, because you have such a, a small magazine, uh, you want to semi-auto again and bring yourself. Just this, see this cute little thing? This cute little pop gun here? Check out the math on this. 6.4, 6 if you hit them once, 4.4. Oh, well, there you go. If you're close enough, boy, that's, that, what is that, 11 damage? Yeah. So if you're close enough and you you you, won, you hit them with one bullet and then you just quickly swap out this cute little pistol, boy, howdy, you're going to have a good time. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, roll these perks too a little bit, but today we're just going to use the default perks because I'm going to go back through and re-perk all these guys, rename all of them with all these uh, name orders that I've collected so that I have another set like I do for my Axis characters, right? And the last the surnames, I must clarify, obviously are not, not correct, but... Uh, my uh, the first names are names of some of my real life friends, right? And they don't watch any of this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> They'll never know. They'll never know. Okay. Oh, so engineer premium. Go build. Go build those rally points, the ammo, the sandbags. Think, use your brain and think. How would how would I appreciate someone else building any of this stuff for me? And that will make you successful. Trust me. And it doesn't have to be the premium. Again, this can all be just regular squads. I'm just using premium because I I paid for it, right? And I really do enjoy uh, the PPT 27 in semi-auto. And it doesn't nobody. <laughs> It sounds super strange to switch your super high fire rate over to some auto, but trust me, it's 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 kind of funny. It's fun to do too. It's fun to do to people. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but all of these uh, gentlemen also have uh, the cowboy revolvers. Oh, we haven't even talked about the cowboy. We haven't even talked about my cowboy Angies yet. Uh, so we have uh, engineer, submachine gun, engineer. The third engineer is my engineer uh, trainer squad, right? That's why I have all these untrained one-star troops who are well-equipped. And they're all equipped. Oops, excuse me. They're all equipped with the same exact equipment. They don't have perks, but that's okay because I'm training them. The entire uh, purpose of the squad is just to drop engineers in and just give them every tool you possibly could so that they they can be successful. And the reason that I keep all of my loadouts roughly identical, I don't have enough pistols to fill out uh, those guys quite yet, but I keep my loadouts as similar as possible when I'm gr uh, grinding uh, because I, you know it it can be beneficial to push the enemy and play somewhat recklessly. And if you're that close to the enemy, trying to get those kills, trying to get those grenades in, you know, whatever you have to do, it is very beneficial to have those extra med kits. Uh, as soon as you go down, you swap to your other guy. You'll see if, if uh, ooh, let's, uh, <laughs> yep, we're going to have to rename those guys so I don't butcher, uh, I don't butcher these names. I don't want to disrespect those people's names or anyone who has that name in real life. Anyhow, call this the, the cowboy class. 
We have the uh, the old Winchester 1895, awesome rifle, awesome, 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 awesome rifle. And uh, I'm not 100%, but I'm like 99% sure that this counts as a rifle kill, or this is technically considered a bolt action uh, because it, it has a somewhat similar cycling, but obviously instead of a bolt, you know, we have a lever, right? And the entire purpose of that lever at least in my mind, you know, I don't know anything about firearms. <laughs> but the nice thing about having a lever, so I've heard, is uh, it's kind of like a straight pull bolt. You know, like you know, most bolt actions, you have to hit it, you have to grab it, or you don't have to, but normally you grab it either like this or like this, and you have to rotate it, right? You have to rotate it. And what does that do? That blocks your vision. A straight pull bolt, you don't have to rotate it. You just pull it straight back. Oh, you see that? Yeah, eyes are still clear. So obviously the lever action is even even better because you're not doing this awkward thing with your arm raised. You can do it from the shooting position. I don't know why lever action rifles didn't be, didn't just become like the standard. Like I love bolt action rifles as much as uh, the next person, but fire rate don't lie yep fire rate do not lie you'll be more competitive than uh i i can't think of a german bolt action that's faster and I, it doesn't really matter because look at this monster right here look at this the muzzle velocity 850 meters a second is uh moi. absolutely moi. and out to 200 meters you're talking about downing people you're not going to be using if you're using this thing at 200 meters and you're downing people Oh uh, yeah, we got a Chad. <laughs> What's the female version of a Chad? Somebody will have to enlighten me on that. But yeah, it has a, a decent decent reload. Uh, if you expend all five rounds, you want to expend all five rounds if possible. But if you know you're safe and you know your squad's safe, yeah, maybe do the little you know single bullet reload. But trust me, the the stripper clip is much faster. It does have a decent amount of recoil, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter because it settles pretty damn quick too. Yeah, this is a good weapon. And then we have uh, our cowboy wheel gun here, the Nagant, also 1895. Isn't that cute how the, the years on those match up? And uh, I love revolvers. This one in particular I like because it is the type where uh, the, the wheel, <laughs> the cylinder, doesn't pop out. So you can use a speed loader. It's more the old, the old fashion where you literally have to just load each shell and rotate the cylinder. It takes two hands to do it. And, uh, you know, you're, yes, you don't have a speed loader. But there's just something satisfying. There's something satisfying about just click, click, click. And sure, this thing, uh, you know, I'm not really quite sure why uh, the Nagant does as little damage as it does. Like, look, 10 meters, two shot, and then everything beyond that just gets silly. But uh, one of the things, another thing I like about this gun is it has, yes, a seven round cylinder yeah not six most most revolvers only carry six bullets but a uh, Nagant revolver carries seven ah look at that. oh it's starting to make sense a little a little now the cartridge weighs seven grams it has a seven round magazine and it has roughly 70 vertical recoil oh that that's quite a lot isn't it Oh, and it's 7.62. <laughs> Sorry, that's too many sevens. That's just too many. Uh, but anyhow, we'll move on. This beautiful little thing is uh, an anti anti personnel mine, and uh, well, you y'all remember uh, when we were kids, or you, you know, a lot of you are going to be older and younger than me, but everybody remembers being young, and you remember like those little. Uh, lights <laughs> that you just like you plant them in the ground and they're like solar powered and that's all you do you just plant it in the ground well they, these pretty sure like that looks like a stake to me don't it like a stake and a grenade 
And then this this little thing, probably in real life, I don't know, you probably like tie some fishing line around this and the other other side or the other end of the line to a tree, maybe something like that, just so you know, somebody trip over it and accidentally pull the pin and then grenade go boom. Highly doubt these have a very long fuse on them. <laughs> I highly doubt they have a very long fuse. And of course, um, we can't forget about our seven sticks of dynamite. Yep. It's all seven of them. You need all seven of them, trust me. Trust me. Oh, didn't mean to pull that one back up. And uh, on our first engineer slot, I don't need to use finger quotes for that. But on our first NG slot, uh, we have tools. We, we still have three med kits, and if we uh, press the appropriate button, we'll just use the med kits, but we have tools here just on this one so that uh, by in the chance that we come across uh, a friendly vehicle that is hurting, <laughs> we can repair them. It'd be super nice if we had proxy chat in the game because then, you know, I could or anyone could just walk up to say a friendly tank who's taking fire, see, oh, you're damaged, and just call out in proxy, hey, bud, I got a toolkit, I'm going to repair you, don't get out. And then just repair them, and uh, then there's no confusion, <laughs> and everybody's happy. But yeah, so premium, premium for the experience, NG, submachine gun, and then the third one is the fun class, because by the time this class is wiped out, we are back to this one right and yes you can have all these slots and yes we have a tank just in case an aircraft just in case you know the madsen for fun if we <laughs> if we choose to uh, but the most important thing here oh i don't even have them set up i'll have to do that but the most important thing we have on reserve is uh this uh the bomber squad and we will have to set it up before we go out but this is a just in case these three we're focusing on and they all, every single one of these, is equipped with these explosive packs of those seven sticks of dynamite. You can deal with tanks, especially in Moscow, easily with these explosion packs. We don't really need the bombers, to be perfectly honest with you. We don't, we don't need them. Uh, but they're there just in case, right? And besides that, uh, the anti-tank rifles in Moscow are also about as much fun as you can have with your pants on in this game. <laughs> like, I, again, I'm only level 16, but every time I, I scroll down, every time I scroll down here and take a look at uh, this little thing, uh, the PTRS-41, uh, I'm, I know it's a long ways off, and I won't be able to make a video on it for a while because I do play all campaigns and uh, also actually don't have very much time to play the game but that's okay that's why I, that's why I buy premium yeah because otherwise I'd be left <laughs> in the dust but that's okay uh, we're gonna go load into a match we'll cut to that and I'm gonna focus mainly on these three squads and yes there are four man squad but they're well equipped they're extremely well equipped. <laughs> and we're just going to go rock and roll and see how how many games it takes us to get that battle summer, that top 50%. Yep. Oh, excuse me. It's down here. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's just four games. Hopefully. But uh, we're not going to worry about it too much. Well, we are going to worry about it too much because... Uh, once we knock this out, this isn't going to be like the flamethrower uh, task in D-Day because everybody likes knifing. I don't think very many people liked using the flamethrower on airfield. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Okay. I'll meet you out there. Okay. Here we are. Welcome back. And we're just going to uh, quickly load up a little engineer squad, a little premium squad. And we're just going to take a little look at our map. Oh yeah. I know exactly where I want to build this rally. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm fairly sure that 
uh, players will spawn in the direction that you build the rally point. We'll have to test this, but it seems to be the case. It seems to be the case. But let's find out. About how we can help our team here. You see this is a high traffic area, so ammunition does make sense here. It is on the way to the objective. Build our team up these sandbags, help them out. Let's help them stay in cover and engage the enemy and switch to another guy. You see their our teammates are taking shots here. And we could really help them out with that by building another sandbag. Yep, get down behind this uh, sandbag with those bombs. Which for some reason don't seem to actually work. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, sandbags don't really uh, work sometimes. But, yeah, see, it didn't destroy them or anything, anything silly like that, right? It didn't do anything silly like that. So let's just take another listen here. We can hear that stupid coming in. And we're just going to pretend like he doesn't exist for a second. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Okay. Let's think about this again. Let's get another sandbag up on this little monster. Help our team out. Help our team out, right? Build a nice little uh, great wall of Moscow here. Help our team out. Oh look, an enemy. Hi there. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what they're doing. That's okay. We just take a little Arisaka. Yep, they're engaged with somebody else. But we're just gonna get a nice little, just a nice little up and over there. Huh? Just a nice little up and over. There. there we go. He's a little multi kill. Take a look at the objective. We need to focus on what we're doing for now. We just need to stay focused a little. Oh! <laughs> That's okay. The idea was I was trying to extend those sandbags out so I could get a rally point uh, right about here. That would have been super close to the objective. But that's okay. You know, it doesn't always work out for you, does it? Not always. But we'll get them. That's why we have a second engineer spot. So we want to be burned. I hate using the word burn. We're not going to try and purposely die as the squad. But let's try and use them. Oh my goodness, I think I forgot to. <laughs> wow. This is why we bring a plane. Uh, that situational. The ability to have that situational. There we go. Let's, let's try this. Let's see. See. <laughs> Now that we have our little submachine gun in semi-auto, I'm just going to take a nice little look around. We're going to start taking it slow, right? We don't want to burn too many of these bullets. Tell our teammate, our squad mate, to sit here and cover our rear while we push this objective, yeah? Just keep an eye out, yeah? Keep an eye out. Take a little look around. Okay. Isn't that weird how that guy just kinda... Oh yeah, we have anti-personal on mine. Let's lay one of those down. Wow. 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 That's okay. That's okay. You know, sometimes it's just a little weird, isn't it? <laughs> sometimes it just be a little weird. We're not gonna let it irritate us or make us angry, we're just going to try and help our team, right? We're just going to pull out our engineer squad, and we're going to help our team out. We're going to build these sandbags. Yep. Since our team seems to be struggling at this particular location, there's two sandbags and an ammunition uh, crate near it. You know, somewhere in the middle, but not too close to where it's obstructing your teammates, will uh, help your team out immensely. We're just going to sprint across and hope we don't get shot to this last location. See? Right here as well. There's an ammunition crate because if the Germans it doesn't look very likely, but if they take the first point, uh, this will be useful in defending their uh, inevitable push. Right? Wow, look at all this, huh? Getting shot at uh, through the walls, but that's okay. They didn't hit us. I gotta turn the uh, aim on as well there, bud. 
No, don't worry about that guy. Don't worry about that guy. No. Do a little nice little one of these. A nice little toss, a little up and over. We're just gonna take a look at our map and really think about how it is we can really help our team. You know? Let's put a rally point down in the trenches if we can survive long enough, which we can't, but that's okay. And this is again why we have two engineer squads because we desperately want to get a more effective rally point down for our team, right? It's not about kills, at least not in my mind, when I'm trying to grind as an engineer. I'm trying to just get my butt in a good position to help my team, right? Engineer is a support class, yeah? Hi there. Yeah, almost F that one up, that's okay. We're just gonna help our team out, build a little sandbag here. And a little rally point, yep. Just a little rally point. This should be mostly secure from bombs. And it will give our team the ability to spawn in this location. Yeah. Take a little peek out, make sure we're not under fire. Yep. And what we're gonna do now place the sand back here and then remove the one that we put up previously. Why? Just to make it easier for our teammates to get where they need to go. And we're just going to leapfrog, call it leapfrog, and it's, I don't know if it's the proper term, but we're just going to give our team cover. Oh, well look at that, we're on attack and I didn't even realize. <laughs> Oh, isn't that cute? It's almost like when you play for all factions, you just kind of forget, right? It can be kind of silly sometimes, but, you know, that's fine. Hi there. Ooh, boy, you do not look friendly. Yep. Oh, do you need melee kill, sir? you need melee kill? Yep, hi there. Why don't you poke your head out again there, sweetie? Yep, there it is. Oh, the biggest, uh, <laughs> I just have to laugh at myself, I really do. I really just have to laugh at myself. Yep, let's take a little look. It's always a good idea to uh, cover your teammates, if at all possible. Always a good idea to cover your teammates whenever possible. Point your weapon over their shoulder, especially in squad. You're not gonna friendly fire, so you're not gonna hurt them. Nothing to worry about, yeah. What I'm worried about is getting another rally point up for my team that is very close to This will help us push. And we already know, let's check, I rarely ever check this for one. C7, I'm not doing that great. Uh, but I am building and there is someone else who, also, who is also building. Only seven kills, my goodness. Don't you know this game's all about kills, seven? Okay, let's try that out. Let's try that out, then. Let's try and just get a few kills, huh? Let's just try and get a few kills. Just a couple, though. I don't want too many. I don't want to be greedy or anything like that. I don't want to be greedy. <laughs> Gotta let your team have some of the glory, too, sometimes, right? Ooh. I could have swore that would have hit somebody. That's okay. We should probably get our... Uh, Wow, look at that hip fire. Isn't that hip fire accurate? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Let's move on to uh, that submachine gun that we really haven't been able to show you all yet, huh? We're gonna try and spawn on our own rally. It's really frustrating when you can't spawn on your own rally, isn't it? <laughs> that's fine. So. We're going to put up some anti-personnel mines to protect our, our uh, rally point. We're going to swap off to this guy. He's going to climb out this little window here. Yep, and we're going to place another anti-personnel mine at the window just in case there's a smart little German. A smart little German who wants to come and take out our rally point. So we have it covered now and it'll give us more of an opportunity to get hit by fucking artillery or some explosive. Is there artillery? Let's check. Oh, no, there's no artillery. It's just, uh, it's just that extremely frustrating explosive spam, right? Oh, there's that. There's some more of that explosive spam. Isn't that fun, guys? Isn't it fun when you're just trying to play the game and you're just trying to uh, 
oh, I don't know, uh, try and cap an objective the size of a house. Oh, look at that. There's the Stuka again. We can watch him from this view. He's just bombing everybody. Why? Uh, because the capture point is about this big in real life. <laughs> that has to change. If, uh, if, if the cap zones don't get bigger, somehow, some way, Dark Flow, if the cap zones don't get bigger, the gameplay is never going to evolve. The gameplay will never evolve if we're constantly fighting over the same exact tiny, tiny, minuscule little teeny. Let's take a look here. Can we not, can we not build over sandbags? Oh, that, that sucks. Boy, that sucks. Um, wow, so we'd have to actually walk back and destroy our sandbags? Got something else I really don't agree with here. That's fine. Yeah, we're just gonna charge out and get shot. We're gonna tell our NG buddies to help cap this point, or or we're just gonna get blown up by yet more <laughs> artillery, close air support. Uh, every every German uh, in in this campaign is just hucking grenades in our general direction because for some reason. Uh, the cap zones are too small. You see how everyone is funneling into that sh shitty, tiny little cap zone and making it completely unfun because all the Germans have to do is focus the explosives. Focus the explosives and look at that. They'll probably get hundreds of kills and we will not be able to push the objective because literally as soon as you walk out of where I placed that spawn point, you just get annihilated. It's stupid. It really is kind of stupid, right? It really makes you wonder. You can see the other engineer has some uh, similar ideas about helping the team out. Oh look, we can build sandbags now. Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness. Hi there, German. Yep, we're gonna swap over. And we're just gonna fix his little wagon. Yeah, hi there, bud. Ah, fuck off, bud. He tried to push us. Yeah, he tried to push us. A little headshot there. Now every now and then, every now and then I can aim, but it's not very frequent, you know? Just every now and then mostly. It's just every... That's a teammate. And I didn't follow my own advice, and I didn't wait for the full reload, but you know, that's okay. That is perfectly fine, yeah? We're just gonna take this guy out real quick, just real quick. We're gonna try and spawn on our friendly. Oh! All out of engineers. Nope. This is why we have a reserve squad. And I did forget to set these gentlemen up. And it. It's okay. We're gonna try one more time. Just one more little time. Just to get a rally point up, huh? Still can't build sandbags, right? For some reason, I can't build over sandbags like I can build over rally points. Which is super, super, super weird. Why can't you do that with sandbags? I have to literally go find all my sandbags and disassemble them? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. If you do it for rally points, you can do it for sandbags. Or, I don't know, let's check. Can I interact with this at all? Can I interact with this at all and just tell my... I can at least show myself where the sandbags are, but... And let's just try and just... Wow! And already dead. Oh, there it is. Let's wait till the noise is done. Just wait till that rolls down. Oh, look at that. Oh, we didn't get, uh, we didn't get top 50%. A lever even beat us. Isn't that weird? Oh, it's almost like, uh, playing, uh, engineer almost exclusively and really trying to help your team out as an engineer. And obviously I could have done a lot better, but in those circumstances on attack, uh, <laughs> Like, engineer on attack needs to be more viable. Why the f can't I 
build over my sandbags like I do with rally points or the ammo boxes. Why? Why? <clears throat> and then, pretty much the entire game, the Axis just... They know where to throw those explosive packs. They know where to drop the bombs. Oh, because the capture point is this big. Oh, excuse me. It's this big. I keep forgetting. <laughs> there you go. 40 engineering, 40 structures built. Uh, plus 15 kills would be uh, 65, right? And you'd think that would net you. Oh, I don't know. A little more experience. Yes, we didn't kill very many people, but that was the point of today's video, right? Obviously, uh, I can get kills if I, I try to. Any of us can. But when we play as mostly an engineer, you don't get for it. I mean, we got a decent amount of experience, uh, I suppose, because we were using premium squads, but that wasn't fun and engaging gameplay, was it? Was that fun to watch, me just getting blown up and my entire uh, team getting blown up and that uh, the Stuka just dominating the skies and just doing whatever they wanted to our team? No, there's a reason why we had levers, right? Because uh, they weren't having fun. For every one of these names that gets axed out, you have to wonder to yourself how many of these new players just leave the game because they experience some horse like that. That wasn't fun for me. It wasn't fun for me to record. It wasn't fun for me to make. It won't be fun for me to edit this. <laughs> and that's my point of today's video. Yeah. We really need bigger cap zones because once that's all the enemy team has to do is just lock down combined explosive ordnance on a tiny area and as long as they do that there's pretty much nothing that you can do against them almost nothing you can do against them that needs to be fixed and i don't say change i i mean fixed the cap zones need to be fixed there are too many people and uh, AI squad mates fighting for too small of an area for this to be fun and engaging gameplay. If that, if if you took that cap zone and extended it over that entire town or the village, and we were fighting over each building, uh, the Germans would not have been able to just nuke us, to just nuke us down like like they did and you you might say well get good get good doctor online <laughs> i never claimed to be good i never claimed to be good at this game no i just enjoy it and when i have games like that that feel hopeless and every time i step outside they just get nuked that's not fun and in fact that's that's probably the only uh game that I'll actually play today because all those engineering structures I built far above and beyond the rest of my team and I didn't even get top 50 percent boy no wonder hardly anybody plays engineer right even even the the premium one why would you why would you purchase that if you could spend your time playing a support class like you would expect uh just a brand new engineer player who just wants to support their team and build things. And maybe they get, you know, a few kills here and there. You would expect them to get real frustrated if they saw themselves way down here thinking, well, I helped my team out. I built so much ammo and this and that. They're going to do one of two things. They're either going to look at the top players and realize, oh, I need kills. I need kills. I need kills. So they'll either do that and stop playing engineer and then we have less engineers or uh, option two they don't care about kills like this guy <laughs> and just want to play a support class and not be treated like dirt for playing a support class by being at the bottom of the list unless you oh get the kills it's very rare very rare that i ever achieve first place as engineer unless I have just one of those 
<laughs> you know, one of those miracle games or whatever, where it's just like, oh my goodness, and we all have them. Uh, this game was not one of them. <laughs> That's okay. Because I, uh, today's video is not about kills, it's not about, you know, a super exciting gameplay or whatever. It's just trying to prove a point. <laughs> Triple sevens, baby. Triple sevens, right next to each other. You see that? Right next to each other. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Whenever I see three of them together, it really gets me going. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll quit rambling. That my point stands. You know, this this rotation of these three squads, which I mainly focused on almost the entire match. Uh, if this game's focused on infantry, and uh, as far as I'm aware, free to players don't have access to the additional squads. Uh, so, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but would they not pretty much be limited? Uh, to like a rotation of three squads for the most part, especially starting out But if you take the time to put two engineer squads in your rotation with just a little and we didn't do much with the uh, submachine gun today, but Let me tell you I you know we could have uh, we probably could have gotten some decent gameplay I'm gonna have to make another video on the PPT because uh, we literally <laughs> Spent oh, I don't know Almost half of that game just getting blown up and 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 down and by the end of it I just didn't give a sh anymore You know what I just I need a little break from this game yeah, we'll worry about the battle summer a little bit later, but boy, they really need to fix those cap points, don't they? Wouldn't this be more fun and engaging if we weren't fighting over a, a thimble? <laughs> My goodness. All right, that's all for today. Love y'all bunches, as always. <laughs> Seven out.